Hey guys, so in this video I want to show you how to add new pages using Squarespace Developer and also style sheets, um, CSS files, and JavaScript files. So this is the website that um, we're going to be making today. It's kind of a silly application, just something fun that I wanted to build because I've been in a sci-fi mood lately. So follow along, I'm going to just start rebuilding this and I'll show you guys what to do. All right, so here we are with our website reset here. This is where we left off with the last video. And so let's uh, let's begin. So this is the site.region. This is kind of their default. Um, so we're just gonna start and make a new region file here called home.region. And then we can copy in kind of the basic stuff and uh, paste. Let's do, let's be really bare bones here with uh, with what we keep. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this main content section. This would be used for the CMS if we wanted to build out a bunch of stuff there. But in this case, I'm just going to remove that. Uh, let's get rid of these classes here because that's that's going to have predetermined styles. Actually, let's just get rid of this too. I just want to keep it really simple here have as little fluff as possible. Let's get rid of the navigation. And I'll leave the footer just so you can kind of see a use case for the block field. This is important. This is one little element that you can use for modification on through the CMS here. So you can see, you can modify the footer by clicking there. So. That's kind of normal Squarespace stuff. You just throw that in there for non-technical people on your team to use that. So kind of the balance between custom code and using stuff like this depends on your use case, your team, how many technical members will be using this. I myself prefer to write custom code because I think it's more efficient and I don't have to fight a lot of the styling that comes with these block fields. So that's kind of what I'm going to mostly gear this towards. Here we go. Um, and then what I'm going to be building, what you guys saw, that little animated solar system. Um, I didn't create that. And that was created by someone named Prosper. Um, and here it is. And I'm just going to make it full screen. So let's start with just grabbing this canvas element. Let's put it right there. The next, what we want to do is we want to create a style sheet come in here and let's go home.css and what I'm going to he do here is do um, the ID of canvas and that's just I'm going to give it a width of 100% to give it a full screen so now we need to import some JavaScript as well to make this work so we can see this whole JS file let's just copy that and then we come into scripts here create a new file and let's do home.js and just paste that in we'll come back over here and you see this is where the script for this whole site is being injected so we're also going to inject the home page script as well and this little combo attribute here is um, this combines all of the scripts when the user receives the website build it's a pretty important for just performance general performance of the site it's not essential but it helps and then I'm, I'm guess I'm guessing this is just you know if if you are the developer, AKA the authenticated account, don't combine these so that you can see each file separately. But of course now we refresh the page and, and nothing's changed, right? So what we want to do now is go into the template.conf file. And this is where this basically lays out the communication between what you have here and the actual Squarespace platform. For style sheets, um, I created home.css and global. So I'm also gonna create global here. Forgot to remove those. Okay, so we have those guys and this is just an array of all the style sheets there. Um, reset, you can see in the readme that you don't need to add this in there. It's automatically picked up. This is what you'll kind of find. The default layout is the site.region but we're gonna add in the home. So let me just copy this. Now change this to home and we'll go home page and then home for home.region. 
you can leave out the dot region. So let's push that and see what we get. Um, so let's get add, get commit, adding homepage. Get push. All right, so it looks like it got pushed successfully. So let's go over here and refresh. And of course, nothing's happened because we haven't actually used the template. Let's go in here and create a new page here. Blank page because we don't want to have any other blocks or anything messing with our template. Click on the gear icon and we should be able to go down to advanced here and see that the page layout field is now available. And click on home page and save. And there we go, there it is. Let's, let's also make this our home page. We want that to be our default. I'm gonna refresh this. Oh, hasn't refreshed because we need to actually pull down the changes, restart the server. All right, so cool. We have kind of the basic foundation now. Um, we're gonna add the title and then the logo for the site and then a couple of bootstrap buttons. So very simple. Let's now mess with the logo and title. And you can do that in the CMS. You can also just throw down elements here to display. But for site title, we're just gonna go with Taylor's space website, you know, silly name, add a logo. I downloaded the NASA logo earlier, so you can use whatever you want. And let's restart the server to make sure we have access to that. So we can inject in those two pieces of data, the title and the logo, through the JSON template binding. Let's use the original site dot region as our template for that. Just keep it very simple here. Let's just grab, wrap it in the section website. We'll have a data bind to curly brackets and we'll do site title is the name of the value. The key is the website. And so it's, you know, JavaScript object notation. So there we go, Taylor Space website. Let's just keep it just the H1 tag. Change this to family and future. Under that, let's do a uh, let's do an image. The value is logo image URL. So there it is. Obviously this is huge, so let's make that a bit smaller. Let's give this an ID. Let's also just wrap this in a header. Let's call it content wrapper, okay. All right, so basically what's left is two buttons. So now let's grab bootstrap buttons. Planets, this is gonna be a collection that I make in a future video. And there we have it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to address them and uh, stay tuned for the next videos.